Hey, when will I be YouTube famous? I don't know. Probably never. What I do know, this is War of Beauty, and if I have done my editing job properly, you should be watching me in black and white right now. Oh dear, it's been a long time, hasn't it? Sorry folks. Health issues have been keeping me from filming, however, fingers crossed. Fingers crossed, I'm back on track again. You will have seen from the thumbnail, the title, and if you've read any of it, the description. Today, I'm trialling a new indie brand. This is the Earth Palette by Charlie Betty Beauty. What does it look like? Which colours did I choose? What does this look like? In glorious technicolour. All of these questions and more will be answered. And you, my friends, you have the best seat in the house. Some of the sloth straw is here to remind you. It's time to grab a drink. Grab a snack, put your feet up, and get comfy. Because here it comes. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Okay, you'll have to forgive me if I'm a little bit clunky in this film. Um, had a really, really bad flare up and haven't been able to film for about a week and a half. Um, you would have seen that from the fact the last two weeks there's only been two films gone up one each week. So I'm a little bit out of practice. It's amazing how you forget what you're meant to be saying when you're sitting in front of it, even though you've been saying it for years. But I would have shown you this in the intro. This is the Earth Palette from Charlie Betty Beauty. Let's open her up. She's a pressed pigment and glitter palette. Now, you know, I'm not normally good with mm, glitters or pressed glitters in a palette like this. I don't mind a whole palette of pressed glitters, but pressed glitters in a mixed palette I'm not overly keen on. What I do like is the double layer of bubble wrap inside this box before you get the palette. I also like the fact that we have the same symbol on the front but with the earth palette ring underneath it. We have the ingredients on the back so I don't have to keep this box if I don't want to. And on the spine, it tells you what it is. So if you've got it stacked in a drawer or up on a shelf, you can easily see what the palette is. And let's face it, that's always a good thing, knowing what your palettes are. This is a new indie company, well I say new indie company, it's new to me, indie company from the UK. She has these gorgeous little brass effect clasps here and opens like so. I did have one of those plastic condom things in but I've thrown it away when I swatched her. Um, although a couple of these are glitters, to me they're more the more acceptable kind of glitter. It's not like when you do that you don't feel a crap ton of um, loose gritty glitter um, so 
I'm actually okay with using these on my eyes. If I, hopefully it'll appear this time, because I said this last time, put some swatches up here, and then when it rendered, for some reason on my version, it showed that the swatches were there, and then when it uploaded to YouTube, the swatches were gone. I don't know what happened, but hopefully you'll put some swatches up there from this, which you can be looking at while I tell you a little bit about the company. You get a nice little handwritten note from the owner. Uh, thank you so much for supporting me. I hope you love your palette and create some amazing looks. Love, Charlie. So, when you go onto their website, which is charliebetty.co.uk, and go to their About Us, that's the lovely Charlie. She's stunning. Uh, this is Charlie, owner and creator of Charlie Betty Beauty. With her passion and obsession with beauty and skincare and qualifications in beauty therapy, skincare and business studies under her belt, Charlie started her beauty therapy business in early 2017, offering treatments and retailing tried, tested and loved skincare products. Fast forward to lockdown 2020 with time on her hands and an overwhelming urge to help women around the world to feel comfortable in their skins and embrace their personalities and bodies. Charlie created a Facebook group dedicated to expressing feelings and talking all things beauty with regular live videos, tutorials, reviews and Table Talk Tuesday. It was at this stage Charlie finally managed to realise her lifelong dream with the help and encouragement from the girls in the group and three of her closest girlies, Charlie created the Earth Palette with the vision of an ongoing cosmetics line with a message to inspire everyone, regardless of gender or race, to release their creativity and be the sassiest, most confident version of themselves. Vegan, sustainable and cruelty free, Charlie Betty Beauty don't just love cosmetics, we love animals and the products too. Oh, and the planet too, even. Which is why absolutely none of our products or ingredients are tested on animals and we do not work with companies or suppliers that do. This is something we pride ourselves on and have done since day one of creating our company. We believe no animals should be harmed in the making of any cosmetics product and currently 90% of the packaging and components are widely recyclable. Our mailers and packaging products are also made from sustainable materials. We're on a mission to go greener every day. Fab. Absolutely great. And the palette retails for 28 bowls. Uh, or with clear pay you can do four interest free payments of seven pounds each so that's the blurb I want to put this on my face well my eyelids anyway but before I can do that I need to run through a little bit of housekeeping for my channel um, next door we're having building works done but I need to film so if you do hear background noise I do apologize I will do my best to try and filter out as much of it as I can when I'm editing um, this remains a teaching channel so by virtue of that I will of course be going at a speed that beginners can keep up with and I hope that swearing out there isn't getting caught on my camera This is also because of my chronic pain. Uh, I also zoom right in close so you just have my eyes on screen. I do this for a number of reasons. One, it's easier for me to cut out when I have to wince or when pain takes my breath away or I get a pain spasm. It's much easier for me to take a clip out without you even realising if it's just my eyes on screen rather than my whole face grimacing at you. It also means, regardless of how good your eyesight or how small the screen you're watching me on, you should be able to see what's going on and be able to follow along and uh, recreate yourself any of these looks. 
because I'm not a professional, far from it. I'm just someone who enjoys makeup. By virtue of that, there will be times when I'm cleaning a brush or adding more pigment that I'll look down, and you'll get a lovely shot of my little widow's peak here. You're welcome. Uh, it's a small trade-off in terms for me for you being able to see what's going on. Final little bit of housekeeping. A lot of people with deep set eyes mistakenly believe or are mistakenly told that they have hooded lids. Um, you find this a lot even with bigger beauty gurus. I'm going to insert a clip in just a moment which will talk you through the difference between deep set and hooded lids and the best way to apply eye makeup depending on the type of lid you have because although they wear in a very similar manner during, throughout the day the way you need to apply them initially to get the best initial look and the most longevity from your makeup is slightly different. That will be just my eyes on screen, it will be very very up close and personal. Please don't scream or drop your cup of coffee or whatever else you may be imbibing. Once the clip is done I'll be back to stick some of those pigments on my eyes. Um, if it gets too noisy or too sweary, I may have to just put music over bits of it. Uh, forgive me if that happens, but I'd rather you got a film with uh, a little bit of a different feel from usual than not having a film at all. Right, here's your clip. Now, um, my eyes have this primer on it. This is the Crown Pebble Primer in blank page cotton. I do have a discount code for this. It is not affiliated. I don't earn money from it. But if you use my code, you save, I think it's 15%. And I earn pebbles that I can offset against future purchases from them. The reason I love the Chrome Pebble Primer is because it's it goes on like a cream, but it has a powdery finish. So unlike when you use a concealer or like a MAC paint pot for example, you have the trade-off between do I set it so I can blend easily or do I leave it tacky so that I get the full impact of colour. You don't have that trade-off with this, you can blend on it instantly and you don't lose any of the colour. Now she does six different shades of this at the moment. White is the lightest, the deepest two are a chocolate brown and a black. Then there are three different skin tone shades as well, so you should be able to find one that will work for you. Um, I apply this with a flat brush, just a very light layer, and then I buff it over with a fluffy blending brush to take any excess off and to make sure I've got a nice even layer across the eye. Now, I've got deep set eyes, so I get the same issues that people with hooded lids get. I get transference of colour onto the upper lid. If I'm cutting my crease, I have to cut onto the upper lid, not just through the socket. And if I'm using glitter, even with glitter glue, I get a bare patch in the middle. Because people with hooded lids get the same symptoms as people with deep set eyes, I see a lot of people with deep set eyes thinking they have hooded lids when they don't. So they follow the guidelines for hooded lids and wonder why their eyes still don't look right. So, I'm going to explain very easily for you how to tell the difference and what the two workarounds are. With my brows relaxed and looking straight forward, you can see all of my mobile lid from inner to outer corner. You can't see a lot of it, but you can see it. So I haven't got hooded lids. It's only if this upper lid comes down and completely covers part or all of the mobile lid that you have a full or a half hooded lid or what's known as a mono or an Asian eye. I'm going to demonstrate on this eye deep set eyes because this is the eye that I'm blind in so I'll stay on screen and in focus. If I cover a visible mobile lid 
and close my eye. You can see I've got as much, if not more, lid that tucks back away out of sight. And if I do the same on the top lid, the static lid, you can see I've got about the same amount of lid again that tucks back away out of sight when the eyes open. And it's those two bits of lid rubbing together that give me the same issues that hooded lids get. So, what are the workarounds? If you have hooded lids, get a brush, something like this, or a pencil brush. Sketch out on your static lid where you want your new crease to fall. Now obviously that's going to reduce the space between the crease and the brow. So just use smaller blending brushes, or if necessary, take the colour right up to the brow, instead of leaving a gap. If you have deep set eyes like myself, all we need to do when we're putting the colour through the crease, which nine times out of ten will be the deepest colour that we're using, just sit back, relax your brows and make sure you've brought it up high enough that you can see it when your eyes are open. So, two very different workarounds for two very different types of lids, but that have very similar issues. Hey my lovelies, I am back. Right. I'm going to start off with a fluffy but flat brush this time, just because it happened to be the first clean brush that I grabbed. And I'm going to start off by going... Now, obviously there's a, there's a more neutrally side with your browns and yellows, and then there's your more difficult to create side of greens and you know, your yellows there. So. If any of you know me, you know exactly which way I'm going to go. Greens are more difficult to create. So I'm going to start off with the greens and see how they behave. So I'm going to start off with a tourmaline, which is the pastel green. Not too much kick up in the pan. You can see that. But what kick up there is, I can always pick up next time round when I'm building the colour up. Now, as always, we're going to be doing the Viennese Waltz blend, which is natural turns towards the nose, a flecker when we get there, and reverse turns to come back again. The reason I prefer this to the windscreen wiper is because I'm 46 years old, I've lost over 14 stone, that's over 200 pounds, skin and my eyelids moves. But I know slim teenagers with the same problem, so it can be genetic. Either way, if you just rely on the windscreen wiper, you can get those telltale tiger stripes or barcoding, which is a dead, dead giveaway. Viennese Waltz very gently moves the skin on your eye, first in one direction, then in the other, to hopefully minimise the amount of gapping in your makeup. So. Let's start. I'm going to initially hold the brush flat like this. Um, and I'm going to start about halfway between my natural crease and my brow. I always hold the brush right at the end. And if the handle's long enough, you can brace it against the palm of your hand to stabilise it a tad. Now, obviously, pastels are very, very difficult as well as greens being difficult to create, pastels are not easy either because where they have a lot of um, white as their base, they can be chalky. Um, it's very difficult to create a good pastel which will actually build and not fade away the more you blend it. Now, regular viewers will know the reason that I love my Crow and Pebble Primer which I do have the discount code for. The reason I am loving it... Sorry, news update. Is because you don't have to set it. It goes on like a cream, but it sets to a powder finish. So you don't have that trade-off between do I want to set the um, primer, do 
to make it easier to blend on or do I want to pat the pigment on to blend so that I get as bright a you know, payoff as possible. With Chrome Pebble you don't have to make that decision because although it sets down like a powder, as you can see I was just blending that straight off and that's built up to a really, really nice minty shade. I'll do the other eye now as well. The reason that I do um, the colour on both eyes kind of... It's not simultaneously, is it? Sort of consecutively, that's the word I'm looking for. Is because I can... As part of my fibre I can get random swellings, including my eyelids. Um, almost like a conjunctivitis effect, without the redness and the weeping and the itching and the... Although I do have very runny eyes, but that's, that's just something that's hereditary in my family. Um, And if, if one of my eyes is, is more swollen than the other, I'll obviously apply the colour in exactly the same shape this side as I did on the other eye. Well, mirror image of it, obviously. But there are times, and after I've done that, I'll sit back relax my brows and one side will look different to the other because of the swelling so this is the point that you can then go on and adjust the shape to make sure they look the same both sides when your eyes are open which is difficult to do once you've put all of the different colours on because you can see something's not quite right you can't always tell why okay so I liked that, it's pastel, it's green and it's built up very nicely so I'm going to clean the brush off on a clean washcloth I don't use colour switches anymore, they're far too harsh on your brushes and I'm going to go into cedar which is a real sort of emerald or an Irish green. Again, not a major amount of kick up on it, so that's good. And I'm going to start this halfway between my crease and the bit I've just done. Now because I'm going to be blending them together, I don't know why, but I've found that if I start the blend at the edge of the colour that I'm blending with and start it half on the colour, half on my, on my primer I get a better blend than if I start lower down and work up. I have no idea why that is the case it just is. Best not to ask me too many scientific questions See how I kind of blew the chemistry lab up when I was at school. It wasn't my fault, well it kind of was my fault, but it wasn't. If the teacher had been paying attention, it wouldn't have happened. But, um, because I don't know if you get this particular range of crisps or chips if you're American. Um, we have a range of crisps over here called discos, which are basically round reformed potato shapes that is and in the 80s they had a thing where if you saved up enough packets promotional packets and sent it off with a check you know enough remember them for the postage they would send you a little radio same size as a disco. It was thicker, obviously. 
and it had the uh, in-the-ear headphones. So I used to clip this. I had everybody in my family, all my cousins, my aunts, they were all eating discos for me. So I could get enough of these to sink. That blended really nicely actually. There's a little bit of patchiness just here. But I do have a dry ex marie kind of patch there. So I'll see whether it does it on this eye before saying that there's an issue with it. Because it could literally just be that dry patch on my lid there. It blended really nicely with the pastel without blending the pastel away so that's good. So yeah so I used to got this radio through mine was was a um, brilliant sort of cobalty blue. Uh, a little bit darker than that I'd say. And uh, I'd clipped it of all places to the uh, inside of my bra strap wound the headphone cord round my bra strap up the back of my ear had my hair arranged in front of my ear so that it hid the headphone going in So I was listening to Radio 1 and uh, we were doing this experiment and we had to put, don't ask me what the chemicals were because remember I was listening to Radio 1 not the teacher, we had to put this chemical powder into a test tube and then put it over the Bunsen burner on a yellow flame. And then once this powder had turned into a liquid, we had to add some liquid, chemical, again, don't know which one, turn the flame up to blue, till it boiled, and then take it off the heat, pour it into a petri dish. It's meant to form some kind of crystal-y type, I don't know. Anyway, I couldn't be bothered with all of that. Okay, yeah, it was definitely my eye that was causing the issue here because you can see there's no trouble with, with that blending there at all. Okay. I'm going to change to a slightly smaller brush now to put one of the darker greens on. Right, the next colour that I'm going to put on, if you've had to move your um, crease, this next colour is the one that you move it to your new crease line. Okay. See, so yeah, I put all this liquid and the powder in together, put it on the blue flame, turned me back to it. <laughs> a mistake. Well, I copied what was on the blackboard. And uh, I was listening to Steve Wright, and he was playing. I think it was Kajagoogoo Too Shy. And I heard this <laughs> behind me. Uh, followed by screams and the fire alarm. <sighs> Needless to say, my experiment went a little bit tits up. And set fire to one of the polystyrene ceiling tiles, <sighs> which then started to drip which then became ignited by the Bunsen, but it was a, it was a whole thing, it was fine. And the scientist said you'd put it out, just 
threw the blanket, you know, the fire blanket over it, it was fine. Yes, the fire brigade came out and had to check it and everything, and I kind of got barred from chemistry after that, but it's... Anyway, going in with a smaller round brush. And I'm going to go into Gaia. God, kids, if you are listening, do not do what I did. Especially if you want to go into medicine, Caitlin. You need your science. Right, so I'm going to go into Gaia. Initially, I'm just going to concentrate right on the edge of my crease and the outer third of my mobile lid. I'm just going to build up a little bit of colour just on that outer edge initially. And as I usually do, do my fake flick. So that if I don't, um, if my eyes are too watery for eyeliner, my eyeshadow can fake it for you. Can you see the difference? Just doing that has done to the shape of my eye. It's really lifted the outside edge of my eye. It's great if you've got slightly downturned eyes as well. Right, so I'm now going to take this along. I think we're going to go about halfway today. About, to about there, I think. And sort of trail off. Come back again. And just make sure we've got a nice little sweepy, whoopy bit just there. The lighting is bizarre today, so I do apologise if it keeps changing on me. If it gets really bad I'll put the uh, ceiling light on in the kitchen. I don't really want to do that. I much prefer to use natural daylight and just the LED strip light behind the camera because I like you to be able to see it true to colour. I don't like, you know, I, yes I could buy a ring light but I don't, or you know, umbrella lights and stuff. But I don't want to have the kind of lights that, you know, blur texture and blur edges and stuff, you know, if, if a foundation gives me texture or if a highlight highlights my texture as well as just my lovely head chick burns, I want you to be able to see that. I don't want it all kind of blurred out with studio lighting and jiggery pokery and yeah, filters that some of these bigger gurus use. We've seen it, we've seen you move too quick. And then you Pause the video and zoom in and you can see the mismatched foundation and the, the texture that you're trying to hide. We see it. We're not stupid. Not so green as I am cabbage looking. That's one of my granddad's expressions. Okay, so far, I am really pleasantly impressed with this palette because those greens have performed exceptionally well. Just need to make this side a tad darker, I think. Did you watch Robin Ranesh versus Drag? So funny. When um, Michelle Visage was teaching them how to walk in heels. What about memories of me trying to get the guys to walk in spicy bits? 
I used to work with the kids charity in the 90s and uh, we did the spicy bits I was on Sporty Spice uh, three men and another 50 year old woman with Scary Spice it was brilliant Right, now I'm going to go in with, I think I might go in with quite a dark um, shimmer today. I normally go for light ones, but I'm going to go for a dark one today. Just tidying up the edges there, just before I go in with it, otherwise in editing. It will annoy the ever-loving you-know-what out of me. I don't like using tape because if the tape is sticky enough to stop powder from slipping under the edge of it then it's going to pull at your eye when you pull it off. Now, never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. However, I do usually wet a pigment the first time I try it. As a rule, I don't put glitter glue on unless it's specifically a pressed glitter. Um, or specifically says it has to be worked with glitter glue. Um, and I don't normally do a cut crease because I want to see the opacity of the shadow. Because a lot of people now are putting more topper style um, shimmers and stuff in their palettes which are great because it does give you another option of layering a topper style over another shimmer or over another matte and getting a completely different look but I do like to know that before I start planning a look so I'm going to go into Ivy which is a lovely deep green. I'm just going to pack that onto this flat brush. And then wet the brush. I'm just using a fixing spray but you can use anything. Right, this ferrule is now wet so I'm going to tuck it into my knuckle and spin because the last thing we want is moisture getting down here and loosening those bristles otherwise we will end up with a stick not a brush. And I'm now going to apply this to here. Um, yeah, you can use any liquid. I mean, I'm, I'm using a, a cheaper setting spray because obviously I tend to only really use Slay All Day or Urban Decay All Nighter on my skin. And of the two, I prefer Slay All Day because it's uh, got a lower alcohol content so it doesn't dry my skin out as much. Okay, that's gone on really nicely. Just going to use the tip of the bristles to blend that into the edge. Yeah, I mean, I'm just using a cheap fixing spray, but you can use anything. You can use a moisturising spray like MAC or Mario Badescu. I'm just going to dry the brush off before I go back in. You can use a fixing spray like I've done, you can use a priming spray, you can use a finishing spray, you can even just save an empty spray bottle and put fresh water in it when you're doing your makeup. Just never go into a pressed pigment with a wet brush. Now, I'm going to have to break one of my golden rules about not pulling your lid around because can you see these super deep creases that I have here that even the Viennese waltz doesn't completely hide the tiger striping that's damage caused when I was five six years old by the ophthalmic hospital so I'm going to show you what I do to apply this in a way without causing too much additional damage because if I don't do this then what happens is that the powder builds up in the creases and then as it dries 
cascades down, gets in my eye, gets on my face. A, it's painful. B, it doesn't look very nice. So, using my other hand, I gently stretch the lid out, but only as far as it takes to straighten out the creases. So I'm not pulling it out to my ear roll. And I very quickly apply and blend that shadow onto the lid, making sure there's no excess, and then gently put the lid back. And I will then finish the rest of the lid off the same way I did this one. But you'll see that this lid moves an awful lot more than the other lid did because of the additional damage that was caused. So if that's not proof not to pull your eyes around, I don't know what is. But if like me you do already have damage, that is a way of applying a pigment or a shimmer in a way that you don't cause too much additional damage. Obviously you can be causing a, a certain amount of damage when you're pulling it around but certainly less than if you were pulling it out and wrapping it around your ear roll. Right, I'm going to pause you now while I go and chuck some foundation and whatnots on and I will be back to finish off this eye look. Now for me, I've got to wait a little bit until I can talk to you again but for you my darlings, it'll be completely instant so I'll see you right now. Hey, hey, hey. I am back. I have used my Pink Honey uh, Honey Glue in Strawberry Sherbet. Love, love, love this. Another UK indie brand. I support indie whenever I can. Uh, brows have gone a little bit uh, Werewolf of London. Oh, but I'm quite liking that. So I'm keeping it like it is because it's my face. <laughs> right. The colour that I used through my brows is patchouli, if you were wondering. Which I know my hubby will like because he loves patchouli. Right. run a little bit of patchouli underneath the lower lash line like cell and then using a fluffier brush I'm going to go into satin which is this glorious yellow and I'm going to use that to buff out the lower lash line because I'm just in that sort of mood today. Thankfully, I think the work will have stopped for a tea break. Which is good. to decide what colour I'm going to use under the tail of my brow and in the inner corner. Now, normally in the tail of my brow 
Sorry, I'm just getting a little bit of powder out of the inner corner. Normally up under the tail of my brow, I'll choose something from the palette. But I don't know if that green might be a bit too much. Two. I might go with this, even though it's pink, and you shouldn't really put pink and green next to each other. Although well, there is this honeysuckle shade. Yeah, right, I'm going to go try, try a little bit of honeysuckle under the brow. Because apparently, along with boobs and bums, ladies and gents, and those who are neither. Her brows succumb to gravity as well. Isn't that nice? Okay. I mean, I think I might use that pink Capricorn shade for my inner corner. Because, well, why not? This is more of a topper shade, which is why I'm not worrying about the fact that it is very much pink. Um, because I remember from swatching it, it is more of a, it doesn't have as deep or opaque a base pigment. It has a more sheer base pigment. In terms of a little bit of zhuzhuzh, it will do nicely. Look at that. Right, sweetie pies, I'm going to pause you one last time, chuck some highlight on, mascara, lippy, do something with the hair which is not wanting to play ball with me today at all. And I'll be back with my final first impression thoughts. If you can have final first impression thoughts, I'm going to have them on uh, the Earth palette. Again, for you. Instant. Hey my lovelies, I am back. I used my Essence Lash Princess, the orange one, as my mascara. Lippy is the uh, Kiko Milano Smart Fusion Lipstick in shade 434. That's a bullet lipstick if you are wondering. Uh, it's a satin finish and it's really, really comfortable. Really comfortable. So, this is my initial look with the Charlie Betty Earth palette. What do you think? You like? You don't like? Personally me, I like, but then I like greens and it's a very heavily green featured palette which is great. But that being said, There are enough neutrals over this side that you can have like work and play if you couldn't wear something like this to work. Um, or likewise, you know, you could you could put maybe this. Oh, Taurus! That's my style sign. You could put Taurus through the crease and blend that out, and then maybe just pop one of these lighter colours just on your lid, top it with one of the topper shades and you know there's a lot of options available to you with this palette um, obviously I've only used a few of the shades so far however I have used greens I have tried the pastels and those are a the most difficult formula and b the most difficult colour to create so a green pastel is a double, white, double whammy and you can see there's been no um, 
fading or smudging or anything like that with that pastel and I have not reapplied anything to my eyes off camera. The only thing I've applied is mascara. I've not actually done anything in terms of um, the colours to my eyes. Hello darling. Hello. That's hubby just coming in the back door. So what do you think actually? Let's get your first impression. What do you think of this look? Oh, can't get around to you. Oh no. Oh my god. What do you think? Oh it looks very nice darling. What look is this called? It's called the first impression with the Earth palette. Oh, sounds sounds like an original name. I like it. <laughs> what do you think? Very nice indeed. Oh, and I just discovered the hose has the hose gun has a split in it. Hence why my glasses are soaked. I did wonder why you've got. I, I maybe turned it, it on. Started raining or something. I turned it on and it went <laughs> and cracked in the frost. Okay. But it was only a cheap one, so I can just find another one. Alright, have we got a new um, duct tape we can chuck around it for the time being? I'm not, I don't really need it, I've reused it already. Oh, okay, fair enough. I just sort of kept it at an angle and duct. Quack, quack. Quack. There we go. I've been in this family too long, I've started doing the Christmas tree, Christmas um, cracker puns. Anyway, oh, hubby me. approves, that's always a good sign. Love you. Not that it doesn't matter if he doesn't approve, it's my face, my, my look, my choice. Um, but it's always nice when he does actually appreciate the look as well. Um, the mats blended out very well. Uh, they blended together well. The pastel didn't fade away when I blended a deeper colour into it. Um, the depth of shade is good. The, you know, the, there's a nice balance in here of you know you've you've got a deep brown you've got a deep green which is great but you've also got mid-tone green mid-tone brown you've got warm browns you've got cool browns um you've got warm greens you've got cool greens so you've got a lot of options available to you in terms of looks that you can create which is great and i'd imagine that quite a few of those would be good one and done ones for work as well so do I think it's worth a 28 quid? In other words, having if I'd played with this, if this was somebody else's palette and I'd played with it, would I pay 28 quid for it? Yes, I would. Um, indie brands you pay a bit more for anyway because they have a smaller production run, obviously, which obviously increases the unit price to them. However, the benefit of a smaller production run means their quality control tends to be significantly higher. A, a friend of mine used to run a um, small indie brand and every box that arrived she would take one from the top of the box, one from the bottom of the box and check them. Do you really think if someone's having 100,000 units or something run, they're going to check two in every box? It's not going to happen. But with indie brands, you get what you pay for. Because it's a smaller run, yes, you pay slightly more for the palette, but you get better quality control. And to be honest, 28 quid, this is really good packaging. This is not... This is not bendy cardboard, this is good quality thick cardboard. You, you're going to be able to travel with this when we can ever travel again without any worries about an errant shoe coming loose and damaging your palette because the cardboard is creased. Um, so yeah, I definitely think it's worth the 28 quid. And uh, if you like that colour scheme I would absolutely recommend it to you. Now, if there are any other specific colours in there that you want to see me try, let me know in the comments section. Do you want me to do a neutral look with it? I have had a request to do a neutral look with um, 
Club Nebula, the Kaleidos and uh, Aniela Knigvist palette, which I will be doing a neutral look for you with that very shortly. But my Earth palette arrived and it's rotten, horrible, overcast, nasty weather. I've been feeling like poop for a week and a half. So I wanted to do something fun and bright to cheer me up a little bit. I hope you don't mind. Yeah, it's a, like, if there's anything that you've, if there's any palette you've seen me use and you think, oh, I like the look she did, but I wish she'd used shades X, Y, Z. All you have to do is go to that film, leave that comment underneath that film for me. I make a note of all of the requests that I get and where possible, I will actually film them for you. Uh, sometimes it takes me a little while to get round to them, but I do film. So far, I've filmed all the requests I've had, apart from the Neutral Club Nebula and uh, wanting to see another look with um, the this one, Sample Equaliser 2, wanting to see a look with... Um, some of the golds and greeny shades, well, browny greeny shades, greeny goldy shades, rather than because I went down the purples obviously when I did that because it's the most difficult colours to create. Um, so I need to do another look with this one. I need to do the neutral look for Club Nebula, and I've also had a request for the. Um, a rather aggressive dark stormy look that I did in my I've had enough film I've had a request to film that as well so I've, I know I've got those three to film but if there's anything else you want to see me do with any of the palettes that I've done so far then you know f do do comment it because I do read all my comments I try to reply to all of my comments as well okay if you're one of my 4F babies, please double check you are still subscribed. YouTube are unsubscribing people still, but they're leaving the films in your suggested. So it's not obvious that you've been unsubscribed. Um, with me, they keep knocking all of my recommended, all of my notifications from all down to personalise, which means you don't get anything at all. Um, so it's absolutely worth double checking that your notification status is what you want it to be, not just for me, but for every channel that you follow because it's affecting all of us but it's really hurting smaller channels like myself a lot. So if you like supporting smaller channels, um, you know, it'd be, it'd be really good if, uh, if you do that and just double check that every so often when you've got a few minutes to spare. If, however, you are new here and you've tripped over me some other way, hi, hello, welcome, I hope you enjoyed it here. Um, I'm not always as rambly as this, although I suppose sometimes I am. Depends how bad my fibro is being and whether my brain goes for a walk without me. It does that occasionally, it normally comes back. It just sometimes takes a little bit longer than others. But it would be lovely if you would like to join the 4F family. We are the nicest family on YouTube. Super easy to do. You hit that red subscribe button, turn it to grey, then you ring my bell, ring my bell, and choose all notifications in the hope of that YouTube will actually send some. In the meantime, as well as a rather ample backside upon which I am sitting, I also have an ample back catalogue of films, see what I did there, that you can be catching up upon. I've got first impressions, I've got product reviews, I've got tutorials, I've got collabs, challenges, tag films, I even read my favourite poem in one of them. So uh, that sounds like your kind of thing and you need a little bit of me time. As I've said now for what, 
feels like forever to be quite honest. Grab a drink, grab a snack, pick a playlist, put your feet up my darlings and indulge. Right my lovely ones, as ever, all that remains for me to say is you'll stay fabulous and I will see you next time. Bye for now.